have no phone messages. You have an email from your electricity supplier. It's a bill. This evening, Parallel has selected programs in the following areas. News headlines, football, police series, documentary. We'll start with a documentary, unless it's not convenient. To select other options, speak now. Fine, we'll run the documentary. Days ago, the body of Bulgarian-born web TV billionaire Liam Keller was found in the River Thames. Keller was branded the King of Chaos after his revolutionary internet software changed the face of world television. He'd been missing for two days. Growing evidence suggests that Keller's drowning was not an accident but a killing. Yeah, it's Keller. Keller had many enemies. The most vocal say his death is best for Britain. Keller claimed to be a free market liberal. He was, in fact, a thoroughgoing determinist. He knew what would happen next. He knew what was good for us. Well, now he's gone good riddance. We British will be happy to build our future without the likes of him. Before the body had even been recovered, the questions began. Then. That's the body of Liam Keller. Yes. How did he die? I don't know. They just found the body. The bar, you're his Bar's head of security. Him. Yes. Was anyone with him the night he disappeared? No. Not even security. No. Could it be suicide? Mr. Keller was of a very positive disposition. It remains to be seen whether the new head of Keller Corps, appointed within minutes of Keller's disappearance, keeps to his initial promises. Liam's death is a shock. We're all stunned. Um, but I would like to say that the company is in good hands. Liam's programs will go ahead. Nothing will change. Tonight, full disclosure reveals that Keller's leading role in expanding the internet gave him unprecedented power. Power that brought him enemies at the highest level. We expose the truth behind the killing of Liam Keller. Would anyone want Liam Keller dead? Anyone who ever met him. Thank you, ladies The night he died, Keller gave a typically I'm abrasive speech to the exclusive Turing seminar on a familiar theme. I'm just telling you what I see. We pay taxes to the government and then pay again for the self-same services. Private health care to avoid rationing. Private education because the schools and the cities don't work private transport because the public transport never takes anyone where they want to go when they want to go. Private security because the police can't cover the ground. Private pensions because the state pension is pitiful. I'm forced to ask myself, what is the government for? All and any of these services are already best bought via friction-free trading on the net. It's time to face facts. It's time to take government out of the loop. After giving the Turing seminar, Liam Keller took a taxi back alone to this point in London's Docklands. Keller owned no home of his own. But over there is the waterside penthouse his company rented for him. Now, Keller was staying in an area between A and B grade policing. The taxi dropped him off in front of these derelict warehouses and usually he took a short walk across the bridge home. But for some reason on that particular night, Keller seems to have taken a stroll down by the river. These pictures captured on the taxi security system confirm that Keller was alone as he headed for home. Thank you. The luxury apartments where Keller stayed pay for enhanced policing and surveillance. But here on the other side of the river, the warehouse owners don't. This accounts for the poor quality of these images. Much has been made of the stranger seen walking near Keller, but the police have been unable to identify him. It's impossible to know what role, if any, he played because the camera which covered the bridge to Keller's home had been vandalized the day before. These are the last images of Liam Keller alive. This is the site of the broken camera. 
Keller's personal emergency beacon was found further along the quayside, so we can presume that that is the point where he entered the water. This was the police explanation given within two days of his Thank body you, being found. Gentlemen. Thank you. I've just seen the interim autopsy report. The pathologist suggests Liam Keller fell in the River Thames and drowned. The National Commissioner of the Police's Special Investigation Office, therefore, finds no reason to pursue the investigation further. Is that it? Yes. No sign he was pushed into the water? None found by the pathologist. We generated the following video morph to recreate the police version of events. They suggest that, perhaps needing a walk to clear his head, Keller turned off the bridge and continued up the quayside. They then proposed that finding a gangway open to a platform on the river, he tried to make his way closer to the waterside. On the way down, he allegedly slipped and fell. Keller's head of security disputes the official version. He's agreed to help in the making of this program. Do you believe Liam Keller's death was an accident? No, no way. Does Keller call? Liam didn't have accidents. Anyway, there are too many loose ends. Unexplained marks on his body, you know, that sort of thing. The National Police attribute those to accidental contacts with objects in the water. And the place they reckon he fell in the water, it's ludicrous. What was he doing? Gene Kelly impersonations? Could it have been suicide? No, there was nothing suicidal about Liam Keller. He had everything to live for. The man had changed the world. Fifteen years ago, at the end of the 1990s, these machines, televisions, videos, fax machines, modems, Macintosh PCs, were all addressed through different machine languages. Just to By the time of his death, Liam Keller had built up Kellercore from a small software manufacturing company to one of the most powerful multimedia empires on the internet. He amassed his fortune by making technology simple and freeing us from the trials of Technobabble. Each had its own standard too, sometimes several. Unbelievable. Keller didn't just sell a philosophy of simplicity, he lived it. He never owned a car, a house, or a private jet. His favorite means of transport was by bicycle, or traditional London cab, which he hired by the day. He enjoyed a succession of high-profile companions. But far from lounging on an expensive yacht, his favorite relaxation was chess, which he played at grandmaster level. His company, Kellercore's headquarters, are Spartan, never carrying more than 100 employees, Kellercore exists mostly in virtual space. Its stock is traded electronically, its software products are distributed over the net, invoices are generated in Delhi, snail mail comes from Rotterdam. Liam Keller established the first truly virtual corporation. But what was the secret of his success? When Keller said that he loved what he was doing on the internet and on TV, the way he shook the whole thing up, the way he made large media organizations come to heel, he wasn't just some businessman killing journalists to build up a share price. Liam Keller was an absolute techno geek. He lived what he preached. He was an ascetic. Material things meant nothing to him. That made him very dangerous. Richard Steiner may have felt he knew Liam Keller. The popular press seemed less sure. Their investigative journalists spent years trying to dish the dirt on Keller. Frustrated by his ascetic lifestyle and tight-lipped friends, they were reduced to knocking copy. Bulgarian-born billionaire natural Rich, Liam Keller is the king of chaos. He's unmarried, lives out of a carrier bag, and apparently has no idea of the risks his meddling causes to your favourite TV programmes. The sun says, buzz off back to Bulgaria, Boris. Oh, and by the way, if you want a little helping hand spending some of your millions, Taxi Super Soar Away Sadie on page three says she can help you realise your potential. <laughs> and she can. There was little more to go on. We began a search of our own. Machine Usenet. There are 6,015 sites showing threads on Liam Keller. Could you prioritize them for me? What's top priority? Prague. Liam Keller's career began in Prague. 270 hits. Top priority is Anna Berkova. 
According to the data files, Anna Makova knew Keller from his student days. I contacted her by video phone. How did you meet? I first met Liam in 1989 in Prague, my home city. He came there to do some academic studies on philology. He was a brilliant linguist. How did you meet? My husband, Zdonik, and Liam used to play chess together. Anna told me about Keller's early years. Liam was born in eastern Bulgaria and was brought up in a state orphanage. His father was a Russian nuclear engineer who died from radiation poisoning when Liam was five years old. His mother was an economist. She committed suicide two years later. Liam was clever. Well, that seems obvious now. He was educated in linguistics at the University of Sofia. And then he came to Prague to do postgraduate work. That's where we met at Prague University. I was teaching mathematics. Zdonek and Liam, they were computer nuts. Liam was also a bit mischievous, perverse. You see, in Bulgaria, they have a big tradition of writing viruses. It's their contribution to computer science. People didn't know how important virus writers would become in the future. Don't forget, it was the year 1989, the year of the Velvet Revolution, of Václav Havel, the year the wall came down. We were suddenly able to visit the West. We went to Vienna. Liam used to buy old redundant office equipment, old crap computers which were almost valueless in the West. He made a fortune. The technology of Western crap was exactly what we were starved of. And he made people pay in hard currency, d marks for preference. What did you use for software on these machines? Copied it, we were pirates. So Liam spent his time in Prague making money? It's not illegal. For selling clapped out Western computers? Not all. For stealing Western software to put on them? We didn't think it was stealing. Was he still writing internet viruses too? Yes. You make it sound like he declared the one-man infotech war. That's how people always want to depict him. But it wasn't like that. We drank beer. We played chess. We wrote. We read. We did the best we could. We made love. Not war. And then? And then we moved to Dublin. Why? Dublin was a happening place in computers. All the big American companies were setting up there. Why did you move to Dublin with them? We thought we were partners. But we weren't. Ilya Andristo Krasnov, Liam to you, changed his name and became Liam Keller. That meant everybody thought the company was his. It was in Dublin in 1998, working with his friend Victor Bunin, that Keller developed Gambit, the revolutionary software solution the world had been waiting for. Good evening. Among the software stars who've made their way to Ireland recently, none shines brighter than Liam Keller, CEO and driving force behind Keller Core, the innovative Dublin-based software solutions company. With his new computer software project, Gambit, Keller has come up with the big software breakthrough for the millennium. Stock markets value Keller's company at 15 times its price of a year ago. So, Liam, people are talking about you as the first East European computer mogul. So, are you really going to be Bill gates -key, like the papers say? I hope to be a bit more original than that. <laughs> so, what is this Gambit software that everyone's talking about? It means that you'll be able to watch this program on computer anywhere in the world. Madagascar? Moscow? Well, on the Mir 2 spacecraft, before it blew up. <laughs> all you need is a dial-up link. And when will it all happen? Now. Right now. If you have the software installed. And what'll happen to all our old TVs? Use them to access the internet. And the gambit, the distinction between TV, telephone, PC, disappears. By the late 1990s, we were all surrounded by technology. Computers, hi-fis, telephones, televisions. Every single one was a different kind of device. What did Gambit do? It went inside and it looked at all those instruction sets, understood, decoded them, and coupled them from one operating system to another. So suddenly, there was only one operating system, and it was an amalgam of everything, Gambit. There was one vital secret which Keller kept to himself. Gambit was a virus, 
and would gradually spread to every machine regardless of whether you bought it or not. But it was never Keller's intention to make a huge fortune from Gambit. Full Disclosure has obtained exclusive access to Keller's hidden private archive. Here we discover that Gambit was just one part of a three-stage strategy to build an internet empire. The first stage used Gambit to break the barriers between computers and television. I'm in LA. It's seven o'clock in the evening, thereabouts, and all the little executives in the media business here are sitting down to supper and they're all talking about me. I have no doubt. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty pleased with myself. I've just done a deal for Sony for them to supply all the Gambit convergence software as standard on all their new TVs and videos. Hmm. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to Microsoft and give them up to a week to make up their minds. Then I'll offer it to IBM and Netscape. It doesn't really matter who takes it up. Once it's on the net, it will insinuate itself into every machine intelligence it comes into contact with. I'll offer the same deal to Microsoft. <laughs> mm. No doubt Gates will offer me a few million dollars for Keller Core, at which point I'll offer him Gambit for nothing. <laughs> mm, let him think about that. So, no money today. I'm going to change the world. Were you part of his Gambit project? No. Zdonik and I returned to Prague and had a family. We just wanted to be normal, not driven like Liam was. Who stayed with Liam? From the early days all the way to the Gambit project? Only Boonen, as far as I know. And he split up with Liam around then. Anna was the only real source we found on Keller's early years, until we received a remarkable video call. My name is Victor Boonen. I used to work with Liam Keller. Yes, I've, uh, I've seen pictures of you. How did you find me? Someone copied me a posting on your web. Where are you, Mr. Bunin? <sighs> Russia. You heard Liam Keller died? Yes. Mr. Bunin, do you know who killed him? Are you serious? Yes, of course. I did. I killed Liam You're on the B payment plan. So before we can continue, here are some messages.
Victor Bunin's description of how he killed Liam Keller also fitted the facts as we knew them. This is where Keller was last seen alive. Bunin described to us how he followed Keller and intercepted him on the bridge that he used to get home. He said, Victor, what the hell are you doing here after all these years? And he made as if to greet me. He said, you bastard, you stole from me. You stole from all of us. And he laughed. He said, oh, you bloody Russians, you're all the same. Come back to my apartment. I'll send out for dinner and we'll make a party. I told him the party days were over. And I hit him and held over the rail. Then I gave him a bloody good push. And in he ran. What did you argue about? What he stole from me. Gambit. It was not his development, but mine. Did you write Gambit? No. I bought it from a kid. A computer science undergraduate at Minsk University. Well, what did you pay? Fifty American dollars and a crate of vodka. Mr. Bunin, did you intend to kill Liam? Yes. Then why are you admitting it now? Liam stole from me. I dealt out justice. I want my justice understood. But Keller's diaries reveal a disagreement over the long-term strategy. Just been to Heathrow to drop Victor off. He sold me his shares, so at least he has a big fat check in his pocket to keep it warm. The trouble was we could not agree over the gambit thing. Victor wanted to make a quick profit out of it. But it won't work. And what's more, he's missing the point of the strategy. Victor wants to become a mere millionaire. I think we can do something more interesting than that. Since Bunin's confession appeared to be crucial evidence, we had the video call checked by an expert. If I put a faint color cast over the decontrasted image, the figure takes on slightly more color tone than the background. And that's because the image of the telephone caller has been superimposed on the other? That man was not in that station when the image was filmed. Oh, but did he say those words? I mean, was he just faking the background to protect himself? No, it was done to disguise the fact that we're looking at a morphed image. I can demorph it back a stage. The blue mask is intermediate, projected onto the face of the real person who spoke those words into the video phone. So someone spoke to me while Bunin's face was morphed over theirs? High class industrial standard animation, but nevertheless, a video morph. A few simple inquiries revealed that the real Victor Bunin had died in the Boris Yeltsin Memorial Substance Abuse Clinic outside Moscow in 2004. Victor had been an alcoholic all his adult life. So this may well be the world's first fake virtual murder confession. Who was behind this elaborate hoax? Over the years, Keller earned a rich variety of enemies. It began with the second phase of his strategy when he launched broadcasting onto the internet. The chaotic free-for-all that ensued brought him into conflict with the world's most powerful broadcasters. It started as the working man's response to the high prices being charged by the subscription sports channels. Instead of renting a satellite dish and paying over £40 a month to watch the big matches, why not go down the pub with your pals and watch the big matches there? But with Liam Keller's gambit, TV programmes can be received on either a television or a computer. This opens up the possibility of a single subscription now being shared by many different viewers. It's surprisingly simple. Just one person paying a subscription could be eavesdropped over the internet in a process known as passive rebroadcasting. And it doesn't stop there. Once on the net, any programme from any channel in the world is potentially available anywhere. We called Liam Keller on his personal satellite link to get his response to broadcasters' claims that he's wrecking subscription TV. Me? But how? Your software has made broadcasting anywhere in the world available over the net. 
That's right. Good, isn't it? I believe you can get over 500 channels if you know where to look. But letting other people eavesdrop subscription TV over the net is theft, isn't it? Do you ever let your husband read the newspaper you paid for while you read his? It's the same thing. However, it's not just Keller who's sounding a warning to the broadcasting giants. The emergence of the internet as a broadcast medium is a tremendous threat to radio and television because it changes so many of the limits, in fact, gets rid of them associated with broadcasting. Instead of only being able to watch programs when the broadcaster makes them available, you can watch them when you want. Instead of only being able to get a relatively narrow range of programs that a couple of programmers, or in the case of uh, countries like the United States that have a cable television system, a couple of dozen broadcasters make available, there literally are now hundreds of thousands of broadcasters that can make programming available. So those are threats in a very substantial way. Experts predict that in the next five years, existing channels could lose up to half their audience to webcasting. Subscription channels are already fighting back. Avoid the chaos. Subscribe to Eagle, still the best in home entertainment. But traditional broadcasters claim they're not concerned by the changes. The BBC represents the most important brand of all, a quality public service broadcaster, allowing the British nation to address itself through a mixture of news, current affairs, documentary, sports, and high-quality drama. I think that should protect us from the so-called chaos created by the convergence of TV and Internet. Viewers' main problem so far is deciding between the 500 and rising channels available for viewing. If their schedules were published daily in a newspaper, it would have to be as thick as a telephone directory. This is Jean Tate for Channel 4 News, Central London. The Channel 4 interview accidentally led to a now famous clip on the old Square Eyes site, revealing the fears behind the public facade. So, do you really not care? What do you think? Since that poxy software started nibbling its way around the web, we've been reduced to less than 1% of the existing television channels in Britain. But not 1% of the audience share. Not yet. Well, what does it matter? Predictions are that in five years, people won't even watch scheduled television channels anymore. They'll just cobble together their own schedule from TV websites. How will we justify a licence fee then? You can always tell them you're a quality public service broadcaster allowing the British nation to address itself. Ah, oh, bloody hard, Jeannie. As viewers were drawn to the vast choice of free programmes on the net, conventional broadcasters' share of the audience shrank until by 2002, 40% of subscription channels had folded. The largest of the remaining suppliers led a legal crusade against Keller. For people like us, the great majority of broadcasters, Liam Keller's Gambit software led to mass larceny. People stole our copyright. It's as simple as that. Keller took an orderly broadcast system and turned it into complete chaos. And on the way, nearly bankrupted us. You sued? I did. In France, in 2000. Why France? It's where they have the strongest copyright laws. And what happened? We lost. The TV broadcast system was in place for more than 50 years. Gambit has wrecked it in a couple of months. What do you want? Repentance? And then what? To uh, put the genie back into the bottle? You control the patents. Well, that's all right, then. I'll just tell the whole world to stop using it. What's in it for me? What do you get out of it now? Esteem. But money? Mm, relatively little, a few million dollars. We'll buy Gambit from you as a consortium of broadcasters. Name your price. I have money. Money is not a priority. So what is? The idea that I've done something for my fellow man, freed up the net, gained the respect of my peers. Can I get this straight? You've brought our industry to its knees just so that you can go down the cyber cafe and get treated like a hero? No, but now that you mention it, I might just do that. You really are an arsehole killer. Bien <laughs> yes, sûr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Madame, Monsieur, nous avons peur de une bataille, mais on n'a pas peur de la guerre. We have lost a battle in court today, but this is not the end, nor is it the beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning of our struggle with the uh, King of Chaos. <laughs> C'est tout. Monsieur Keller, uh, alors vous êtes le vainqueur, hein? It's not a battle. I freed up TV and the internet. That's all. Oh. A lawyer's Miss Ledsteiner is like trying to sue the water company because you fell into the set and drowned. The broadcasters are trying to blame me for their own lack of vision and insight. 
But the people need money to make television programs. Where is that for to come from? Um, broadcasters organize their businesses up to them. So what did you want? For the net to work smoothly and efficiently, for there to be an almost friction-free medium of human contact and trade, to cut out the endless layers of middlemen that are traditional with developed capitalism. What do you say what to people? people, people play? Maybe people play. Play. And uh, if you put some broadcasters out of business, that's their problem. Monsieur Keller, Monsieur Keller. What do they think I am? A charity for ne'er do well capitalists? <laughs> I am Che Guevara of the net. He knew what was going to happen next. He had it waiting on his shelf, ready to go, even while he was wringing his hands and muttering about unfortunate collateral damage. You mean Parallel, the Keller system agent? Keller knew that the first person to impose order on the chaos he'd created would make a fortune. Liam Keller made sure that he was that person. I'm on my way to the BT Holographic Conferencing Centre. Going to meet broadcasters, advertisers, media moguls, people who are most browned off with me. <laughs> Three years of work. This is what it's all been for. We're going to launch Parallel. There are other system agents around, of course. But they're all crap. Ours is brilliant. This recording shows Keller launching his system agent to the world's top advertising agencies. Some of you may have heard me referred to as the king of chaos. <laughs> I'm not complaining. When we released Gambit, we knew that within a few years there would be hundreds or even thousands of TV websites on the net, and they would be offering tens of thousands of TV programs. He clearly predicted that branding would become extremely important. If you want to watch Premier League soccer, you go to the Carling website. If you want to watch the clothes show, you go to the Giorgio Armani site. What I could not predict was that Gambit would mean the death of TV copyright. With web TV, any transmission is automatically just out there. It is on the net. The problem facing the viewer now is not what to watch, but how to choose. Parallel, our new system agent, offers a structured way to choose. Parallel presents the net to the viewer, very much like the world presents itself. You walk down the main street, come to a library, you go inside, you can read a book. There's a town hall. You can contact government. Down the road is a cineplex. You can take in a movie. And for the best in entertainment and retailing, come and join us on the Virgin Net site. We've already bought space on Parallel because we know this is the marketplace of the future. Amongst our other products, Virgin Net is the home of the Virgin Entertainment Channel and the Virgin Shopping Channel. Simply the best in entertainment and shopping in the world. We have seen system agents before. This is not new technology. Other people have tried to make a system agent. We've made it work. You want us to advertise with you because, frankly, Liam, I don't know if this will work. Oh, it'll work. Your sites, programs, advertising will all have to become parallel compliant. Or? Well, people just won't see them. Other advertisers will take your place. The future's parallel. That was then, this is now. Since 2006, Liam Keller's operation has been expanding steadily. Keller Corps supplied giant web TV billboards carrying parallel compliant web based advertising. Sited in safe, eight leased areas, covered by new generation surveillance cameras, Keller's billboards, of course, respond when people walk past them. Welcome to Parallel. Liam Keller extended the technology he introduced into your office and home right out here into the world. Your up train will be four minutes. Now, while you're waiting, we've got a couple of people we'd like you to meet. Parallel can offer a range of services. 
Mr. Yoshimura of Shotan Incorporated has been selected by your agent as a preferred provider of medical assurance. Konnichiwa. Touch your screen if you'd like him to contact you through your TV parallel at home. Keller's proud boast for his parallel agent was that the only thing you'd never meet in parallel world was some crummy politician. Your train is three minutes away now. If you'd like to go anywhere on the net, just tell us. If you'd like some information fetched, just tell us. Perhaps you'd like to browse. You won't find anyone boring on this site. Oh, and we're pleased to announce that Parallel is now received by over 82% of British households. Okay, shut up. At home and on the street, Keller's Parallel World offered home delivery of food, choice of television viewing, choice of enhanced policing, administration forms, tax forms, passport forms, in fact, anything that could be offered over the internet. Parallel was seen to offer almost anything you could ever need. Not everybody was pleased about that. In Keller's parallel universe, vast amounts of money and vast amounts of trade flow back and forth across the planet, usually to the detriment of ordinary people. Now, Keller claimed that his internet trading could replace government services, the ultimate free market, health, pensions, policing, employment, even transport were all supposedly better organized on the net. The hows were crucially vague, and I'm not surprised. How can a Korean holding company be best placed to run a bus service in Glamorgan? In what respect are global web channels a replacement for British public service broadcasting. How can German investors run, govern mills on wheels? It's crap. Keller's wretched web never could and never would replace people. He just made a great swathe of us, the British people, unemployable. Supernumeraries in our own state. We are the British people, and we have not spoken yet. But in recent months, the paramilitary wing of reaction have been turning words into action. You're on the B payment plan, so before we can continue, here are some messages.
The bombing of this internet computer center was claimed by Reaction, the extremist group formed from a mix of British nationalists, anti-vivisectionists and anti-federalists, who focused their hatred on European institutions and the internet. We clear the area in time and there are no reports of casualties. Do you have any British names internet you can service providers are proposing Reaction websites. Is this a response? We had a call from a source which claimed to be the provisional wing of Reaction. Did they give them a reason? They said it was part of what they call the British people's armed struggle. Over one here, more. over here. One That's over all here. for now. Just one more. We contacted Reaction's political wing at their low-grade anti-infotech website. Hello. Welcome to the Reaction website. Waking sleeping Britain to the dangers of new technology. I'm your system agent. Where would you like to visit in our website? I'm a Channel 4 journalist. I'd like to talk to someone, please. What do you wish to speak about? Liam Keller's death. Trying to connect you. Theme of the week, family, backbone of the nation. We have four schemes for promoting the British family, which we're pressing the government to adopt. Or if you wish, we could discuss the downside of emerging technologies. What sort of future precludes nearly half the nation from working? Wake up, Britain. Our government is stumbling into the abyss. I'm sorry. Channel 4 journalist, there's no one available to talk to you at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? I'd like to talk to Scott Miller about the death of Liam Keller. I'm sorry, Channel 4 journalist. Scott Miller isn't available. No one is available to talk to you at the moment. As reactions attacks increased, Kellercore began to install surveillance into their billboards. These men were identified by optical enhancement as known members of Reaction Front, the terrorist wing of Reaction. They're still at large. This is Kellercore's tiny European headquarters in London. Because Kellercore is essentially a virtual corporation, there wasn't much for the intruders to wreck. Their masks prevented them being recognized. But Keller was left in little doubt who'd come to call. The figure in the gray overcoat is Robert Sinclair, Kellercore's then Director of Finance. Can't follow the odds. I think we ought to start taking this organization seriously. What do they want? They want to turn the clock back. There's probably a week in the late 60s where they think England was perfect. Full employment, Beatles in the charts, bread on everyone's jam. They want to lock us into that week forever. Represent people left behind by the information revolution. They claim to, but they're thrashing around. Who can ban tomorrow? Hmm? If anyone did murder Keller, reactions seem the most likely culprit. It's, it's. Full disclosure obtained this taxi security footage. The recording was made within half a mile of the spot where Keller drowned, 15 minutes after the last surveillance camera lost sight of him. Here's the same man heading towards an early reaction rally five years ago. His name is Kevin Dodds and he's a reaction activist in the London area. All the evidence pointed to Dodds as Liam Keller's killer. Or so we thought, until just three days ago. Checking official records, we discover that Kevin Dodds died in a car accident after a high-speed police pursuit four years ago. So what was he doing in Docklands last month? We also had doubts that a low-tech organization like Reaction were capable of generating the sophisticated Bunin video morph. So I showed it to Keller's former security chief. He was in no doubt who was behind the deception. I've seen this before. I was in the army back in the 90s. It's classic disinformation, sent to confuse us. Why? Who employs black propaganda? The security services, MI5. MI5 have a policy of no comment, but we did finally get an unexpected invitation to meet Reaction's leader, Scott Miller. We confronted him over the alleged death of Kevin Dodds. I couldn't say if Kevin Dodds exists or not. We have contacts with Reaction Front, but of course, they pursue an armed struggle in defence of the British people. They're a different organisation. Would you be surprised if they assassinated Liam Keller? The British people would defend themselves from abuse from whatever quarter, using whatever weapons are appropriate. One people, one country, one future. Does your organisation have links with MI5? Certainly not. We asked Barnes why he thought MI5 would have become involved by faking the Bunin confession. Look at it from their point of view. 
the discovery of a terrorist murderer would be awkward for the government. If you prove, for instance, that reaction killed Liam, that would give them status. Did reaction terrorists kill Keller? Is there a better way of stopping a train than taking away the driver? But apart from preventing reaction gaining status, might British security have had another motive for passing off Keller's death as murder by an ex-colleague? Keller's conflict with government was well known. Nine months ago, he took the unusual step of appearing on Parallel. Before we continue, here's a brief message. Hi, I'm Liam Keller, and I'm arranging this money to represent the monthly family expenditure. Food, fuel, clothes, insurance, supplementary health insurance, supplementary pensions, private unemployment insurance, supplementary policing, private housing costs, private education, supplementary education for those whose child goes to a state school. And this large pile here represents what the government collects from you in taxes. The government is committing large-scale larceny by taking your money for services that you have to buy again anyway. It's time to take the government out of the loop and watch this space. We will be challenging the government's right to force you to pay taxes for services that they aren't providing. And parallel, we'll be making sure that you can buy those services at the best possible price on the net. It's an abuse of a privileged position. What Keller was doing was using his domination of the mass media to put over his political message. Well, he claimed it was a straight commercial offering services his agent could supply. <laughs> well, he would say that, wouldn't he? He made sure we didn't get a right to reply. What are you doing here? But with turnouts to recent by-elections reaching all-time lows, Keller was accused of leading a one-man anti-government campaign. I'm not leading anything. I'm a businessman. I'm playing chess, so please go. Castle. No taxation without representation. No taxation without you doing something useful for it. Sums up my position much better, but then it's not such a good soundbite now, is it? The political group Reaction cites you as a prime example of the characters who've brought about the decline of the Britain we know. They are not a political party at all. They are a bunch of paranoid schizophrenics, you know, led by an inner core of social psychopaths. Should our society be held back by them, hmm? Reaction. Their opinions are worth bugger all. Check. <laughs> well, you see what you made me do, huh? Now I have to buy everybody dinner. Hey, <laughs> the freedom of the press! <laughs> Last month, Keller was called before a select committee held in secret, which demanded he give the government airtime on parallel to respond to his campaign. It led to an extraordinary showdown. Liam Keller's parallel purports to offer an alternative electronic universe, a parallel universe, where people can trade, communicate, live even via the net. Now, don't get me wrong, the government is all for technological advance. We want to see a thrusting, vibrant IT industry here in Britain. This is a bloody cheek. I thought in camera meant in secret, not to a news camera. I've been threatened with jail to stop me talking about what went on in committee. But I'm not on committee. Oh, bullshit. You're pulling the strings. Oh, Mr Keller. If arm twisting was an Olympic sport, you would be gold medalist. What was your arm twisted about? These clowns want special treatment from my system's agent. Compulsory viewing for their political oh. messages if you are fortunate enough to live in Great Britain. Like going back to the old-fashioned party political broadcast system. Mr Keller, I really must warn you. Your evidence was given on oath of secrecy. I thought you weren't there. I can't help it if Systems Agent doesn't offer their wretched political broadcasts as prime time TV. People don't want to watch them. Parallel responds to what people want. How many viewers do you have for your TV station, huh? Three men and a dog, and a few million others laying there waiting for their nurses to switch over. Have you ever asked yourselves why? I will tell you. Politics is boring. From a consumer point of view, government is a failing brand. Government has to deal with the effects of the real world, <laughs> of the activities of people like Liam Keller. <laughs> oh, smug bastard. Two days ago, in a final meeting with Everett Barnes, we were given evidence suggesting one further layer of government involvement in Keller Corps. Make up your own mind. I'm leaving Killer Corp. 
Robert Sinclair doesn't need a head of security, and I don't need him either. The disc from Barnes held a number of covert recordings. We can count on you. We need your cooperation. One showed Robert Sinclair, now head of Keller Corps, talking to a woman in a garage six weeks before Keller's death. Innocuous in itself. But here's the woman again, watching Keller's body being dragged from the Thames. Barnes says he knew her from his days in army intelligence. A last clip showed her entering MI5 through the employee's entrance. According to Barnes, MI5 operatives had sounded out members of Keller Corps to see how deep Keller's beliefs went. We couldn't get enough detail off the Keyside cameras to say for sure that this man is the man we've identified as Kevin Dodds. Just as we can't say that this woman was connected to Dodds. But intelligence agencies do use surrogates to operate at one remove. Stones may break my bones. Barnes claims that he repeatedly warned his boss of the growing dangers, but as this recent diary recording shows, Keller refused to be cowed. Well, what to do? Go to my appointments in a tank? Live in a $50 million five-star prison like Billy Gates? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Barnes also sees the arm of MI5 and Special Branch behind reaction. He says that the groups could not exist without some sort of symbiosis with some secret policeman. Well, he should know he was one of them, but I, I, no, I, I don't think so. It, I mean, this is Britain, not Bulgaria. This is land of hope and glory, happy isles set in a silver sea and all that. And it would be very un-British for the secret police to put an unstable group of terrorists against a simple businessman just because a few politicians did not agree with what he said, wouldn't it? But, God, what's it bloody back to you? Right up to the night of his death, Keller kept attacking the government. Heart. But as for being a little Englander, ruled by a giant local council from the House of Commons, no. They are Robin Hood in reverse. And in that sense, I am anti-nationalist. I am an internationalist. Keller's drive to bring change possibly cost him his life. He believed that the choices brought by the internet were empowering us as individuals and enabling us to get the best from our lives. He made these choices for himself. Keller was a billionaire. He could have surrounded himself with a phalanx of bodyguards. Instead, he chose to wander alone at night in a deprived district bordering his own grand apartment block. Keller's actions conspired towards his own death. The big question remains, who else conspired towards it? This is Helen Parker for Full Disclosure, Channel 4.